This is Plant-Based Briefing, Healing Autoimmune Disease with Supermarket Foods, Part 2, by Brooke Goldner, MD, at nutritionstudies.org. And I'm Marian Erickson, and this is the Curated Content Plant-Based Podcast, where I narrate a variety of articles on plant-based, compassionate, and eco-friendly living with permission every weekday, and I try to keep them to about 10 minutes or less, but today's article is longer than that, so it's been divided into two parts. I read part one yesterday, and I'm reading part two today. So go back and listen to yesterday's first if you haven't already, and then come here and listen to today's. So now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. Healing Autoimmune Disease with Supermarket Foods, Part 2, by Brooke Goldner, MD, at nutritionstudies.org. The six steps to reversing autoimmune disease with supermarket foods, steps 1 through 3. Step 1. Eliminate animal products. Animal products include all types of meat like beef, pork, lamb, fish, and chicken. It also includes eggs and dairy products. The reason these foods must be avoided at all cost is because they cause massive amounts of inflammation in the body. Research has indicated animal-derived products are inflammatory in multiple different ways. A recent study in Scientific American showed that when the gut is exposed to saturated fat, it causes the destruction of the healthy protective bacteria in the gut, inflammation of the gut wall, initiation of an immune response, tissue damage, and even hemorrhage. Meat and dairy are also a direct source of arachidonic acid and other omega-6 fatty acids. These compounds directly produce inflammatory immune mediators, prostaglandins and leukotrienes, and go right to work creating inflammation in the body. The more meat and dairy you consume, the more inflammation you create. You may have heard that omega-6 fatty acids are essential fatty acids, which means that our bodies cannot make them. We must consume them in our foods to get our omega-6 needs met. This is true. The issue is that most foods people eat nowadays, such as meat, vegetable oils, and processed foods, are heavily laden with omega-6 fatty acids, but their balancing anti-inflammatory counterpart, omega-3s, are largely absent. The body uses omega-6 fatty acids to create inflammatory immune cells, Conversely, omega-3s are responsible for creating the anti-inflammatory immune cells. When we eat a healthy plant-based diet, our body will have a balanced ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, where our immune system can make inflammation when necessary and eliminate it when appropriate. Unfortunately, most people are inundated with omega-6 from meat, dairy, eggs, oils, and processed foods, but they rarely, if ever, consume any omega-3 rich foods like chia seeds or flax seeds. The result is that most people are suffering from massive amounts of chronic inflammation, which leads to chronic inflammatory diseases like autoimmune disease. One study published in the American Journal of Epidemiology did a meta-analysis of nine prospective studies that showed that eating animal products increases the risk of all-cause mortality, meaning it raises your risk of dying from any disease. Most folks are familiar with the idea that eating meat increases their risk of heart disease, but don't realize that eating meat increases their risk of death from all causes. Our society consumes enormous amounts of dairy products in the form of milk, cheese, yogurts, and ice cream. Dairy not only causes massive amounts of inflammation, which can trigger and sustain autoimmune disease, but it also causes a whole host of other diseases such as cancer, obesity, osteoporosis, and diabetes. I was a vegetarian from the age of 12 and ate dairy products every day, and I developed lupus at the age of 16 that only went away when I eliminated dairy and embraced a nourishing plant-based diet. When I teach this information to my clients, their first concern is, how do I get my calcium? They fear that without dairy products, they will weaken their bones. Research has shown that dairy products actually cause bone loss, explaining why countries that have the highest rates of dairy consumption like the USA, Canada, Norway, Sweden, Australia, and New Zealand also have the highest rates of osteoporosis. The lowest rates are among people who eat the fewest animal-derived foods, like natives of rural Asia and rural Africa. These people also have lower calcium intake overall than dairy-consuming cultures do, Calcium is abundant and easy to absorb from green leafy vegetables like kale and broccoli without the risks that come with consuming dairy products. 
Animal products are highly addictive, and it can seem impossible to give up these foods, but the less of them you consume, the better you will feel. You need to eliminate them completely to have the best chance to heal. I always tell people I am now way more addicted to feeling healthy than I ever was to cheese. And as a former cheesetarian that had cheese at every meal and sometimes ate a block of cheese as a meal in itself, that speaks volumes. Step 2. Eliminate Added Oils In Step 1, I already discussed the dangers of saturated fat from meat and dairy products. The omega-6 fatty acids which create the inflammatory immune cells can also be found in high levels in vegetable oils, so they must also be avoided. One of the fastest ways to minimize inflammation and jumpstart the healing process is to eliminate the excess sources of omega-6 fatty acids. As I mentioned earlier, animal products are a source of omega-6 fatty acids. Even more so are all of the vegetable oils, with the exception of olive oil. The flooding of our bodies with these omega-6 fatty acids just drives the body to create more and more inflammation, which creates more illness and impairs your body's ability to heal. I've had a handful of clients who were already vegan who came to me for chronic inflammatory health issues, perplexed as to why they were sick. The continued eating of processed foods and vegetable oils is usually the culprit, and when we correct their omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, they feel better quickly. I did mention that olive oil is not a big source of omega-6, so it isn't inflammatory like the other oils and won't drive the chronic inflammation that fuels autoimmune disease. However, too much of any oil will disturb the fluidity of your blood in your blood vessels and the responsiveness of your cells to the signals they need to receive. It basically gums up the system while it's in your body. Oils, even olive oil, raise blood triglycerides or fats immediately after eating them and decrease the function of the precious lining of the blood vessels. So while it isn't inflammatory, it is by no means healthy and should be avoided as well, especially if you have heart disease. If you want to use some olive oil, I suggest getting a spray bottle and spraying the pan with a couple squirts to keep it nonstick. You can also investigate the numerous cooking methods available for oil-free cooking by simply using Google to search for oil-free cooking recipes, which is a far better choice. Now, when I talk about avoiding fats, I'm not talking about avoiding whole plant foods that are fatty, like avocados and coconuts. I've seen many well-meaning health coaches misinterpret this data to mean that people should limit naturally fatty plant foods like avocados, raw nuts, and seeds. Understand that the fat in whole plant foods is easily recognized and processed by the body. I myself eat two to three avocados a day most days. They are filling, creamy, and delicious. When I healed myself of lupus, I ate a lot of guacamole every day, and I reversed all of my symptoms in a matter of weeks. So in general, don't worry about the fat content in fresh, whole plant foods. Just avoid adding oils to your food. If you are going into an aggressive healing phase, you do want to limit raw nuts and seeds to about a half cup a day, only because these nutrient-rich foods are also rich in omega-6. So while you are trying to reverse inflammation, keep them lower. You won't have to worry much about measuring them out once you're healthy. The more you avoid added oils, the better your cells, organs, and immune system will function. Step 3. Eliminate processed foods. Processed foods are products that you can buy that contain ingredients that do not occur in nature. People call them foods, but they're more like synthesized edible products. So what exactly are processed foods? One quick way to find out is to grab a can or box from your kitchen and read the label. If it has a long list of ingredients that you cannot pronounce, or it cannot be produced without a lab, it is processed. It is common in many households to reach for a box or a can when preparing a meal, or to grab something from the freezer and stick it in the microwave. Eating this way is convenient and often cheap, but it does not provide optimal nourishment to the body. The real reason we are supposed to eat is to nourish ourselves, not just avoid hunger. Processed foods are not only lacking in nourishment, they have been shown to cause inflammation in the body shortly after consuming them. This includes processed sugars as well as refined grains such as processed breads, cereals, pizzas, and tortillas, which have been shown to increase inflammation markers in the bloodstream and directly increase rates of diabetes and heart disease. Processed foods are also normally bogged down with oils, making them just another contributor to the flood of omega-6 fatty acids most people consume on a daily basis. Eating to Heal 
When you are trying to heal your body, all foods that increase inflammation must be avoided. If you can eliminate animal products, excess oils, and processed foods from your diet, then you will immediately cause a decrease in the inflammation in your body, and you will start feeling better very quickly. If the idea of getting rid of all three at once is a bit intimidating, start with step one and work your way down. This doesn't have to be a race to the finish line. Do it in a way that you know will be sustainable to you. If you start with just those items mentioned in steps 1, 2, and 3, then you are getting a good head start on improving your health. Our bodies were not and are not meant to digest any of these foods, yet they have become the main sources of food for many people today. That is why people are so sick. If you are one of those people who eat mainly meat, eggs, dairy, oils, and processed foods, then take this as good news because there is hope. The body can recover if you get out of its way by stopping the constant assault on it with these dangerous foods. You can make a difference in your health just by changing your shopping list. You just listened to Healing Autoimmune Disease with Supermarket Foods, Part 2, by Dr. Brooke Goldner at NutritionStudies.org, and I'm Marian Erickson, your host. If you want to learn more about the six steps, I recommend her books, Goodbye Lupus or Goodbye Autoimmune Disease, and green smoothie recipes to kickstart your health and healing. She also has a great video series going into detail on this. You can find it at goodbyelupus.com and she offers it free every month or so. And she outlines all six steps in detail and FYI steps four, five, and six, which this article didn't cover include drinking a lot more water than you probably are and why that's important, adding in plenty of omega-3s into your diet, with flax seeds and chia seeds, and eating tons of raw healthy foods, especially cruciferous veggies like kale and broccoli and other greens. And she shares an amazing way to get tons of these veggies in with smoothies, blending up veggies and fruit and drinking a full pitcher of smoothies every day to hyper nourish your body. And I had been making green smoothies since before we went whole food plant-based, but her way of doing them is so much easier and I pack in so much more kale than I ever was. They're fantastic. I'll put a link to that video in the show notes and just watch for when it's available for free or you can buy the DVD and watch it anytime. And I have a family member suffering from ankylosing spondylitis who's been vegan for years, but we were surprised to learn about steps two and three and then four, five, and six. So we were super excited to learn this information and she is starting one of Dr. Goldner's rapid recovery group programs, a six week program at the end of this week. So we're so excited to finally have some hope for her. So please share this episode with anyone who might benefit and thanks for listening.